Hello everyone, in this video I'll talk about the most important windows for debugging in MPLAB called watch and variable windows, so let's get started. These two windows are used to view and change variables when halted, so it should be clear why they're so important. In fact, you'll likely be staring at these windows more than anything else while debugging, so let's first open them up. If you have a fresh install, these windows may open automatically when you start a debug session. But if they don't, or if you close them accidentally, you can always open them back using the window menu up top. Same with any other window you may want to open. Navigate to debugging, and you can see them both here. I'll quickly open them and put them alongside the breakpoints window from the previous video. Also, don't forget that you have the option to put these windows side by side like this. You may think that it would be tedious to constantly open and close these windows when you start or stop debugging, but luckily MPLAB saves the toolbar and open windows for the debug session separately, which I briefly talked about in the previous video. As you can see, I'm already in a debug session, and if I end this session, the windows go away since I opened them while debugging, and if I start another debug session, we can see that the same windows are back again. These two windows may seem a little confusing for a beginner, since they sound and act similar, but they serve slightly different purposes. Mainly, the watches window is meant to show global variables, which have fixed and permanent memory locations, while the variables window is meant to show local variables, which have temporary memory locations, and there are some things you need to be aware of as well. Let's start with the watches window, and there is surprisingly a lot to talk about. Again, this window is meant to be used with global variables, or more appropriately, global symbols. Like I said before, symbol is a compiler term, and it can refer to more than just variables. When I say global variables, I mean variables that have a fixed and permanent memory location. So, alongside global variables, static local variables and SFRs also qualify to be used with the watches window. Now, you might get confused if you watched my reentrancy video where I talk about how variables in XC8 use fixed memory locations by default, even the local ones, which results in fast and efficient code. But even if local variables use fixed RAM locations, it doesn't mean that that address exclusively belongs to them, meaning they're not permanent. Although I don't know how XC8 compiler works under the hood, it can very well assign multiple variables to the same memory location if they're never in scope at the same time and you should always assume a local variable is lost or deleted when the program exits its scope. Also, even though I said static local variables qualify to be used with the watches window, you'll soon see that MPLAB treats them as local variables as well and doesn't allow you to see them. If all that's confusing you, I won't go any deeper into this. All you have to know is that you're not supposed to use local variables with the watches window, even if they're defined as static. Before we start, let me create two dummy global variables, and I'll just call them global1 and global2, and I'll increment them by 1 and 2 respectively, each time we loop in our code. Now, there are two ways you can add variables to the watches window, which I'll be referring to as watches from now on. First way is by putting your cursor on the variable of your choice, right-clicking, and selecting new watch. The variable's name will be automatically written on this tab, now, you can click OK and the variable will be added as a watch. The second way is by right-clicking in the watches window and selecting the new watch, or by double-clicking this enter new watch line, which will open up the same tab. Here, you can either manually write the name of the variable or choose it from the symbols menu below. Here, like in my breakpoints video, you can see the global symbols and SFRs. Again, SFRs are special registers like OSCCon and OSCTune, which also reside in RAM, and the global symbols will show the SFRs and global variables you're currently using in your project. You can also see other stuff that qualifies a global symbol. You can just ignore them. They are internal to MPLAB. Just focus on your variables. And just like in my breakpoints video, we can't see the global variable we created since we haven't updated our symbols list yet. And again, to do that, we can just build our project for debugging. and it shows up on the updated list now. But I was able to add the global one as a watch, even though I haven't updated this list yet, and we didn't get an error, right? Well, I'll explain why you can do that in just a bit. Now, let's add the second variable as a watch. Put a random breakpoint here, and start debugging. Our program is halted, and now we can see their values in the watches window. If I run the microcontroller and hit the breakpoint again after looping, you can see the values incrementing. 
Now, don't forget from the second video that the values will only update after halting, since MPLAB needs the debug executive to perform operations on the microcontroller. If you need to see the values in real time, you need to either use a communication protocol like UART or use a display and send the values in your code. You can, however, add new watches without halting. Similar to breakpoints, when you add a variable as a watch, MPLAB automatically finds the address the variable is residing in, but this time in RAM, and uses the debug executive to fetch its value when halted. So you can just add more watches, and MPLAB will fetch them as well when halted. But unlike breakpoints, you're not limited in how many watches you can add. You're not using any hardware registers, you're just reading RAM locations. In fact, you can just read the entire RAM, which I'll talk about in a bit. To delete watches, you can just select them in the list, and press delete. And if you want to delete everything, you can right click in the window, and press the delete all option. If I add the watches again, as you can see, MPLAB automatically fetches their value again, no problem. Now, I said that you're not supposed to use local variables with the watches window, but as a matter of fact, you can, and you need to sometimes. Here, I can just type x5 as a new watch, even though it's not in the global symbols list, and the correct value shows without a problem. But if I go into our digit sum function, you'll see that the watch disappeared. Now, here's the thing. The workings of the watches window aren't as complex as you might think. The watches window is just a simple text file in MPLAB. It contains the names of your watches, and really, nothing else. All MPLAB does is check the names of the watches in that list one by one, and see if the name matches a variable in your debug session. If it does, MPLAB then checks if the variable is in scope, and if it is, fetches the value of that variable from RAM and displays it here. Simple, right? And any name that doesn't match with a variable in your debug session, or any matching name not in scope, are said to be unresolved, and not displayed here. As a matter of fact, you can just write a random gibberish here, and MPLAB will add it as a watch anyways, without any errors. Though again, it won't be displayed since the name won't match with any variable in your project. The reason why it's done this way is so a single watches window can be used with multiple projects. You can just add the watch names from multiple projects to the same list, and as long as they don't share the same variable names, only the resolved ones will be shown here, which would be the variables relevant to the project you're currently debugging, and the rest will be hidden. And if you want to see all the names in your watches list, just end your debugging session. Open the window again, and all the names will be listed here when you're not in a debug session. And this also means that the watches list is global to MPLAB, which is the reason why you can use it on multiple projects in the first place. Now, this can be a problem, because MPLAB does actually check each name here one by one, which takes time. If you only have this window open in a debug session, you'll only see the result variables for your project. Meaning, you may forget that this list is global, and keep on adding more and more variables, which will eventually cause MPLAB to slow down. So you should keep this in mind and clear the watches list every now and then. Also, like I said before, even though static local variables have fixed and permanent addresses, MPLAB unfortunately treats them as local variables, and won't show them when out of scope. Now, as you can see, MPLAB also displays the type and addresses of the watches, along with their value. The default value representation for integers is hex, which most of the time will be inconvenient. But you can right click on the tabs here to bring up the list of tabs you can enable and disable. Here you'll find other representations you can enable, like hex, decimal or binary. You can even have them enabled at the same time. By the way, the value tab here is not always in hex. It uses a different representation depending on the variable, and I guess int type defaults to hex. You can right click on a watch and go to display value column as, to change that per watch, which contains even more representation options. You can also delay double click on watch names to change them. I'll go ahead and make this dx2 variable so I can show you something. And as you can see, the value is updated automatically. You can also double click on any value tab to override it with a custom value. Let's make x2 0 for now and step into the function call. I'll quickly add the number variable as a watch, and change its value to 888. Now, if I run again, you can see the new x2 result with our updated value, so you can use this to inject your own values into your programs and see the response. Now, I'll go ahead and write different types of variables to show you, since there are a couple of interesting things to know. 
I'll go ahead and create a structure with bit fields. This is similar to how MPLAB defines the registers, though it's a little different. If you don't know about structures, I definitely recommend learning them, as they improve the readability of many applications. The names aren't important, I'm just writing this to show you how it looks in the watches window. I'll also go ahead and create some arrays, one with text and one with numbers. And let's start debugging. And of course, let's add these variables as watches. Now, you'll quickly see that there's no value displayed here, except for the char array. And that makes sense, right? A structure or an array can't just have a value. It's a collection of values, right? It can't have a single value like that. What would that even represent? But it does make sense for a char array to have a single value, which would be the whole string, since the array contains the characters of that string. And the value tab here defaults to and shows the whole string for char arrays specifically. If you want to see the values for structures and arrays, use these drop down arrows, and you can see the value for each member individually. And in the same way, you can change these values individually by double clicking them and entering a new value. Also, you can click on these triple dots to open the values in a separate window. This is mainly useful for long strings that won't fit in the watches window directly. Now, let's say you have a really big array, and you only want to see a certain segment of this array. You can do that. Just type the name of the array like normal, then add square brackets. Inside of it, put the starting and ending positions of your segment, separated by a column, and add the watch. And as you can see, only the elements between those indexes are shown. You can also just put a single index inside the brackets, like this. And only that element will be shown, though it may look a little confusing like this. There is another way to accomplish this. You can open up the array, right click on the element you want to single out, and click create as fixed watch. And that element will be added as a single watch. This is a little better since there is a dedicated symbol for it, to differentiate it from the arrays. Also, like I said, you can add SFRs as watches, like OSC Con here. And you can see the value we put in it. And the nice thing is, SFRs will also have drop down arrows, which shows you the bit groups inside, and their values individually as well. Let's also talk about these buttons on the left. The top button toggles the verbose mode for structures. When the verbose mode is selected, the structure's name will be shown along with the member. While not selected, only the member's name will be shown. The next two buttons are import and export options. Like I said, the watches window is just a file with names, meaning it's also very simple to import and export this file. If I export the file to my desktop, and open it with a simple text editor, you can see that it just contains the names of the watches we added. Now, I can just delete all of the watches in MPLAB and import this file back. And all the watches are here again. The last button is for configuring the representation shown when hovering over variables. As I showed before, you can hover over variables to see their value and addresses, which you can essentially think of as adding a temporary watch. It's hex by default, but most of the time you'd want this to be decimal, and you can change that here. And as you can see, it's decimal now. Before we finish with the watches window, let me show you some settings you can change. You know that unresolved variables are hidden, but you can actually change that. Navigate to Tools, then Options. Go to Embedded. Here, you can enable the Show Unresolvable Variables option, which will display all hidden watches. Though the unresolved ones will not have an address or a value, and I do prefer this option off. Another big option here is the Enable Alternate Watch List. When enabled, you'll have three separate watches lists instead of just one, but you need to restart your debug session for it to take effect. As you can see, we have three buttons added here, which are used to switch between those three lists. I'll go ahead and add a different variable for each list. You'll see that the watch we added shows up on all lists. There's a little bug with that. It seems that you need to re-halt the microcontroller for the new selected list to update properly, and after selecting a list and re-halting, only the watches we added to the corresponding list are shown. 
but I find that most of the time you don't really need the alternate lists, especially when you can easily import and export them, but it's up to you. Let's talk about the variables window. After how long the watches window took to explain, you may think that this will take long too, but not really. Variables window is actually very basic. Like I said, variables window is meant for viewing local variables. The way it works is really simple. This button is a toggle. When enabled, only the variables at and one line before the program counter location are shown. So now, only the x1 and x2 are shown. And if I step over, you can see x2 and x3 are shown. When you disable the toggle, all of the variables within the scope of the program counter are shown. Or they're supposed to. Unfortunately, I can't get anything to show, even on different computers or on a fresh install or using a simulator, and I couldn't find anything online. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or missing it, but you get the idea of how it's supposed to work. Hey, uh, it's me from the future. While editing this video, I realized that feature works for functions that use software stack. It seems to just not work for ones that use compiled stack, for whatever reason. So, yeah. Also, the same way, you can overwrite the variables here by double-clicking on one of the values and entering your own value instead. The other button allows you to essentially merge the watches and variables window. When selected, everything in the watches window will be shown here as well. Really simple. Also, if you're wondering how this works with the alternate watches option selected, only the selected watches window will be shown here. So if you select the window 3 and re-halt, Window 3 will be shown here. Before we end, I want to show you how you can see every variable in the microcontroller, along with the SFRs. I've already shown this, but you can navigate to Window, Target Memory Views, and Open File Registers. This window will display the entire RAM of the microcontroller in a hex dump-like format. It'll be laggy to navigate because of the sheer number of variables MPLAB needs to read. The red values you see are the values that changed since the previous halt. And look at this, the app name variable we defined resides here, which we can confirm by checking its address as well. And it matches. You can also select symbol format here, which will show you the RAM as a straight down list, along with the matching symbol names next to the appropriate addresses. Though the names of the symbols might be different than what you might expect, since they're internal to MPLAB. You can also double click on the values here to change them. For example, I can change the underscore here with a space, which would be 20 in hex. And there you go. And that's the end of the video, and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, you can always leave a like and subscribe, it's always appreciated, and I'll see you in the next video.